I'll take a girl who is who's is a seven, but she's a ten as a woman, versus a girl who has a ten, but is a seven as a woman. Will you cheat on the seven? Hey, listen, we can't we can't go. You can't go into that. That's a whole different thing. You're asking me what I would choose, what I prefer. So I'm speaking on what I prefer, what I choose. You know what I'm saying? If I choose to make a mistake, that's my mistake, whether I cheat or not. You know what I'm saying? But that's neither here nor there. I'm telling you what my preference is. My preference is I'd rather have a girl who in bed is a seven, but guess what? As a woman, and what I deem as a woman yeah. is a 10, rather than a girl who has a 10 is that wop. But she's a individual. I think it's different for women. Like, I definitely think it's different for women. I think you cannot, you, I think you can be great on the inside and not so amazing on the outside. You understand what I'm saying? And But it can't be the other way around. You can't be amazing on the outside and be up on the inside. Like, that. that is intolerable. But the other way around, women will take the not so, the, the we'll take, yo, I'm going to keep it 100. We'll take the five. On the outside. Y'all be taking the twos. We, sometimes we be, be taking, taking twos. twos. I'm like, let me tell you this. Hold on. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you the really ever. I'll take that two and I'll turn that into a ten. And I promise you every ten bitch out here go wanna go wanna with that that two plus ten. But let me be a twelve. But let me tell you what you just did now. You took the um 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 you know like the the rose that grew from concrete, right? Yeah. So you made him, he was a two when you met him, right? Holiday's a 10. She's bad. Everybody want holiday. And it was like, yo, how did two get a 10? And what you just create a monster. So if you want to create this two, you better make sure he's in check. You better make sure that he knows his place in lane because you done now unleashed the monster. I'm not saying for every guy's going to be like that. Right. But y'all women, when y'all out there taking these twos and negative ones, and so help me, y'all, y'all, Think y'all, oh, I got me an ugly dude. He ain't gonna act up. Nah, the ugly dude starts smelling his sweat. No, it's he the, start acting like, yeah, I'm that dude. Like, I'm just the, saying, it's, it's be the, careful with that. But, it should be a balance. Just saying, be careful. It's not a sure bet that two is gonna, you know, gonna be that guy. Just be careful with that. But just I'm saying. saying, it's always the ugly guys and the fat guys who wanna act crazy. But I'm gonna say this. So stop picking twos. <laughs> Sometimes we are just, we're picking twos and twos. And I'm gonna break it down why. We'll meet a man and think that, okay, you know, he's so cute. But we're not paying attention to the fact that he's smoking the weed all day. He has some type of internal issue that we're seeing, that we're, we're looking past, but we're looking at the cuteness. We're looking at, oh, he got the bag. But we're not looking at, why does he smoke weed from 9 in the morning till he goes to bed at night? Why is it that he's so having anxiety issues? A lot of us don't pay attention to the internal issues. We just look past all of that and see the bag, he look good, he got good dick. But it's a lot of us out here are struggling mentally. Yeah. And we're using marijuana, we're using liquor, and we think that's normalized to society because we think that, you know, it's nothing wrong with it. He just smoked, drink, drink no, liquor, and smoked weed. No, no, that is, exactly the conversation. Wait, wait, wait. that is exactly the conversation. That is exactly the conversation me and Alan was having. We okay. were going from saying that we're attracted to why is that we pick people and not look at the direct issues in people. We don't. We look at just he look good. She got a fat ass. She sucked it good. I'm Whatever just, it is. I'm just a little confused because like within a relationship. Your significant other that you choose, honestly, is a reflection of the traumas that you deal with within yourself. That is true. So honestly, like, if he's smoking all damn day, then what's your habit that you do all damn day? Sometimes you like, don't even have, have to have a bad people, habit. people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but and I'm like, going to say this. Sometimes you don't have to like, have a bad habit. We normalize some of these behavior and think it's just okay. He just smoked weed. And because he looks good and he fuck you good and he snatch up your soul, you're not even looking at the well, internal love, issue I mean, that not person not for has. nothing, like, I socially drink, but I'm a stoner. <laughs> yeah. And I'm here, like, completely functioning here with all of you guys talking and vibing and I'm actively here and present with you um i'm giving you like some form of a message based on the character of the person that i am regardless if i'm high or if i'm sober so not for nothing like i smoke with my significant other okay we all smoke. day <laughs> i mean if we do a certain day i'm gonna tell you what we do all day for certain we make money all day regardless if we're sober or if we're high it don't matter. We're getting to the bag. Look, my goal is success. My goal isn't to be the highest fucking kite in the fucking world. No, I suffer from anxiety and depression just like everybody else. 
I don't drink as much because I have traumas with drinking based on my family. So I smoke often. <laughs> and that's not an issue. That's and not an not issue. An issue. Somebody smoke. Yeah, it's not but an like, issue. Like, but like, so, if I am a woman sitting here telling you that I am actively smoking consistently, then like, we cannot talk about the men who smoke consistently either. Look, don't choose a bum. Wait, wait, wait. Like, just don't yeah, choose a bum. At the end of the day, yeah. she's really right. You have this like, is what certain I was, morals. Yeah, yeah. Well, at the end of the day, listen, you are a reflection of what you are attracted to. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be necessarily smoking. You're talking about somebody who has a lack of drive. And at the end of the day, if I have a lot of drive, I'm not going to be attracted to a woman, you know, in terms of a whole relationship with a lack of drive. It's just never going to work. But when you're talking about right now is what do we want? Or what are you looking for and what you want, to be honest? Because people be sitting here and say, look, I want Holiday, right? Holiday looks like she's a 10. But I, but guess what? I don't know what it's like. If I'm a two, I don't know what it's like to be a 10 or what it takes to be a 10. I can never understand Holiday. Mm -hmm. Holiday doesn't, can't understand me because she don't know what it's like to be a two on the outside and a 10 on the inside. So now you have a conflict of interest because you're searching for the wrong things. You know who that guy is? It's the guy that you date, like, just from experience, when you're an attractive girl, you're dope and all of that, he may not be so attractive, but he's dope in the inside, right? And you find those sexy things about him, but let's just stay on topic. He's not a 10 on the outside, and he's he's a 10 on the inside. But you're a 10 on the outside, and I just speak for myself. I'm a 10 on the inside. But some may say I'm a little toxic, so I might be a 5 or a 6 or I don't know, on the inside. However, speaking, truthfully, he doesn't understand my lane. So he will always feel like he's not enough for me. I can't relate with him with how he feels when he walks outside. Because I'm like, why you feel like that? You with me. You, I chose you. It should be good enough that you dated me. So, I mean, there's been many times, right, where I seen a girl and I'm like, damn, she's a dime. I wonder if actually, like, her inside matched how she looked on the outside. You know what I'm saying? And there's been many times where I start to see how she is as a person. I'm like, damn, I really don't fuck with her mentally or, or spiritually, right? But... Me being me, I'm attracted to the outside, you know. So I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna do it for, and, and um, what's it called? Chase after her and still try to have sex with her, whatever the case may be. I just won't keep her long term. That, that but, reminds but, me. But, but, hold on, wait, 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 wait. one thing. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I feel like at the same time is you also gotta respect everybody's opinion, cause sometimes there's been points and times in my life where I don't care how she's in the inside. I just want a girl that looks good. So if she just looks good, you can't fault me for being shallow. But that you know doesn't scream longevity. I mean, it doesn't. But what happens if that person is like that for a long time? I mean, look, I just feel like there's a heavy emphasis on like this twin flame, like significant other obsession. Like at the end of the day, like whatever relationship you truly want to thrive will thrive as long as you are true to oneself. Yeah. Like, like I'm a little bit of a crystal, like. Yeah, Airhead. but what you're saying, if you, you, know if, you, if, saying? you play on, so if you play like, on words, it's that, all about the if, energy. If you give energy to toxic behavior, you can you can enjoy that toxic exactly. fucking relationship for years. Like you, you can be an enabler saying? and not even but, realize yeah, let me it. Let ask this question though, because everybody's talking about just the external and somebody looking good. We're going through. We're in COVID nineteen, right? And a lot of people lost their job. A lot of people are struggling with different issues. Are we able when we meet these people? Because I know I'm meeting. I'm coming across them a lot. Are we able to identify mental issues? Absolutely. In people. Because a Absolutely. lot of people are disguising those characteristics. Absolutely. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. Let me finish for a minute. A lot of people, people are able to... People try to play a psychiatrist to no, people. No, it's yeah. not. It's not about playing... How do you know what their mental issue is for I'm them? I'm a social worker. I'm able to identify right, cool, certain qualities so, in people. But listen, let cool. me finish one minute. Let me finish, brother. Go ahead. It's certain qualities in people that you could pay attention to in a man and a woman, and you could see it. Sometimes we look at the superficial side of an individual, and we... Don't want to identify the fact that this person is a little needy. This person showed me signs of bipolar. This person showed me signs of schizophrenia. We don't want to identify those signs because we're so into what we want from the individual. What works for you works for you, right? Not saying the attractive guy isn't wealthy too. Of course he is, right? And not saying that won't work as well. I'm, I'm definitely not saying that. You know, I'm definitely not saying, saying that. You're saying somebody I'm, that's a little lower. But what I'm saying is, is that... I, what and I, and this is such a fine line. Like I gotta be really be careful. I want to be super careful with my words because I've dated the fine man who's wealthy, who's who's all about me. 
You understand what I'm saying? So that is not the case when I'm saying, oh, I date a less attractive man because I want him to be all about me because the less attractive man still cheats, especially if he's wealthy. He cheats even more than the, the pretty boy. You understand what I'm saying? So that has nothing to do with it. I think the mentality, let me, now I know where I want to go with this. It's the mentality of a four. He necessarily doesn't have to be a four or or anything like that, the mentality of a four. But where he feels like, like, where he listen, feels like, where he feels like. Listen to what you're actually saying. Yeah. You're literally saying that this man has the mentality of a four. Yeah, like, let's keep uh-huh. it like, right. Hold on. I'm just saying, like, hold on. Okay. like, like hold on. that's just, it's yeah. just very, it's very abrasive. And I literally just, like, I feel like. It has to be more of an emphasis on this, like, really coexisting between the partnership. Like, the materialism, like, that is what lies within the superficial thing that we're talking about. The superficial aspect, the su- superficial love. It's all within this, the clothes, the jewelry, all these, but like, But that these just goes gifts. back to your love language. So, if yeah, my like, love, if my so, love so, language... Okay, okay, if, wait, if listen, not listen, everybody listen, is listen, wearing listen, Balenciaga... Or whatever. If not, if not everybody's wearing Balenciaga, and not everybody's trustworthy, like which one would you prefer? Would you prefer him to buy you like that gift, or would you prefer him to actually just be a trustworthy man? Yeah, I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you, right? That sounds really cute. Yeah. The fact of would you rather a trustworthy man or the Balenciaga? I mean, I, hold on, hold on. Hold love on, languages are different. It's a genuine Jordan, question. Jordan, All right, how would they answer the question? Yeah. That sounds good in a real in a, in a perfect world, right? But I don't know how happy you are in a relationship struggling. I don't know how happy you are. You may be very comfortable there. Well, you know what? We're gonna get out of this. I'm not talking Balenciaga. This is a bullshit holiday. The dog it's not the Balenciaga, uh, but nobody. But you talking about a trust? Yo, you talking about? Hold on, let me finish. You talking about a? You're talking, in the bag. You're, talking, you're talking about a trust? Oh, trustworthy? Why do I have to choose? That's the first thing. Why can I have a trustworthy right, dude holiday. that brings the Balenciaga? I, be, I, be, I prefer the Balenciaga. <laughs> it's not just the answer because that'll be the fucking clip that you take that says, "Do you choose trustworthy over Balenciaga?" And I say Balenciaga. And the niggas is trying to rip a new asshole. It because they, it's no, the but, but it's not the truth. It's not the truth. What I'm telling you so is, is that why can't I have both? Why can't he be trustworthy? But that's and the thing, me fucking love. Balenciagas. You can have both based on who you choose as a reflection right, of what you can both. give to I him. As I'm as not well. choosing. I'm getting trustworthy and Balenciagas. Just Fuck as you. much, just as much as you get is as much as you should get. I'm not choosing. I'm not choosing. And the Balenciaga guy. Hold on, hold on. And the Balenciaga guy who's not trustworthy. He can get packed up too because there's a plethora of men who know how to do both. Listen, all I'm saying yeah, is like right. either uh, so way, look, the Balenciagas are going to be paid for. I got a better question because, better question because I'm not even going to get into this because at the end of the day, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Most women in, in 2021 are superficial, and most women in 21 they're superficial. And guess what? They rather in a woman, and it's crazy. I personally feel like in a woman's mind in 2021, most women, especially the new generation, feel like they man is cheating anyways. So they might as well get paid or get gifts by the man who's cheating on them than be cheated on by somebody who can't give them as much. And what's being promoted by all these women is to finesse their men. And that man ain't shit. And this is what we've been hearing for a long period of time. So now I personally believe, and this is just my personal opinion, is that women, some women, Nowadays, actually, I might even go towards the majority of women is touching that point where they rather feel that to get as much as they can from a man because a man, whether he's a four or a 10, ain't shit. A man, whether he's a four or a 10 is going to cheat. A man who's a four or a 10 can't offer as much, you know, outside of the materialistic aspect. So I feel like we're just as men are trying to be milk drive, whatever resources that we can give in a relationship because of what's like the stigma that's being put on men in today's right. age. Um, I believe he's um, right. Majority. I, majority. Um, I'm, you're right, Rico. I, I, can't, even right. Right. I can't even argue with I'm him. I'm going to say that. And because of that, it's causing a lot of, um, you know, situation among men and women. A lot of men right now, because of the superficial thinking a man got to have a bag, it's fucking it up for us, ladies. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. Yeah, it it's is. messing it up for us big time because this is the thing. We are out here saying they got to have the bag. He got to be this. He got to be that. So now when the man is saying, I ain't got to choose you, I could go to another race. Goodbye. 
You know, and that's why you have brothers out here could point out the fact that you're not qualified and you're fat, you're not cute enough, and you will, they go by numbers now. These are the, you know, ladies, we got to look at the fact that if we're out here putting out what we want, the men are going to say the same thing. So now the heat is on us. Like, oh, why do all the men is counting us as numbers? But we out here saying we want the bag. We got to take, it's both of us. It's like a seesaw. You have to take both. Look at both situations. Women, we're fucking up. The men are fucking up. But at the end of the day, you something, anything negative you put out, the negative is going to come from it. If we're out here as women telling the men, y'all got to have the bag, the men are saying, we don't need you. I'm not going to lie to you. T, I'm not going to lie to you, right? When when I was in the, like, in the dating scene and single, um, after being through like different type of men, right? After Rico saying what he's saying and that, you know a man is thinking, you're this girl. The girl he just named, he's already dissected you, you're this girl, right? I would take a different approach. Because that stigma is there, if I'm looking for something significant, if I'm looking for something real, even though, yes, I like, I like the glitz and the glam, I would have to um, downplay what I really wanted to land the man that I wanted, okay. if that makes sense. So I wouldn't ask for anything for a long time, even if I needed it. Because I did it, I wanted to be something different for him. Even though once we got into the relationship, he did, he gave, and the more he gave, the more I asked. You understand what I'm saying? I got comfortable. You understand what I'm saying? I was able to say, okay, now I can move out. He's talking about not drain him, but be able to say, I want, I want this, I need this, and know that he's gonna give it to me, right? But in the beginning, if I had came off that way, already knowing that he thinks the way he's thinking that the majority of women are like that, I would get nowhere. Two superficial people could work just like two closed-minded people could work. Whatever you're closed-minded on, you can work. If you're closed-minded on money, if you're closed-minded on just spiritual gains, whatever it is that you two both focus on, if you both match that energy, you both could work. Whatever it is. Okay, so you need somebody to match your energy. Yeah, you gotta match, like, it, it, it can be the opposite. Right? Or it could actually be the same. You know what I'm saying? Some opposites don't attract. Some opposites do attract. But same wavelengths will always still ride with each other. Sometimes it's a friendship. Sometimes it's a relationship. I think it's subjective. I, I, I think I, I yeah, agree with yeah. you. I think yeah. it's definitely subjective. Like, imagine, like, right? I'm in a relationship. I've had two different type of relationships. The relationship where, I'm, let's say I'm dating somebody like Rico. I'm on Clubhouse, he's on Clubhouse. I'm not saying you're in Clubhouse, but just understand the, the, the bracket, the age bracket. I'm on Clubhouse. Yeah, I'm on Clubhouse, he's on Clubhouse. We're laying in the bed and it's not a problem. Like, but versus somebody else who's not in social media and, 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 and this type of person, they would have a problem with the fact that I'm telling them, you are gonna have to wait. I'm on Clubhouse and this is building my brand. And I'm in the room with so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so -and, -so -and, -so, and it's gonna last for about four hours. And somebody who's on the same, just like me, is probably on Clubhouse too, building their brand. Versus the other person, they're not saying they don't have a significant brand, but they're building it in a different way, where they just don't see the significance and you being on Instagram all day and being on Clubhouse all day and being on Twitter all day and all these other things. So I definitely appreciate dating the opposite right, of me. Clubhouse, Clubhouse is like the new uh, phone chat. It's the new, it's like Twitter with, with audio. With a bunch of cap. Go ahead. Yeah. It's like a, it, it is. It, and, and, but it is and it isn't. If you know how to do your research, I feel like this, right? The people who come on Clubhouse and have these, these, these triple numbers of followers and they're hosting these rooms with thousands of people in them, right? You know, in my, in my bio, it says I, I shake the room. Why? Because when I come in a Clubhouse room, I'm able to sniff out the fugazi because I'm really who I am in real life. And a lot of these people are not that. So what happens is they expose themselves. Can someone raised on love have a successful relationship with someone who is raised on survival? Yo, yo, Rico, was you in my text messages? Nah. Hold, hold on, on, let me go. Hold on, hold on. You had him on the, you been going. You been going. Go ahead. Can somebody that's raised on love be in a successful relationship with someone that's based on survival? The only way that can coexist if that person that's raised on survival is open to hearing the person that's on love, and the person that's on love is open to hearing the person that's on survival. Talk more, talk, talk, talk more. Talk no, more, because at the end of the day, right, 
you you want to you, you bring in two people together and this is my story this is my story and we have to find a balance I don't want to sit there and say it's so black and white. Once again, both people have to be open. So love has to be open to survival. Survival has to be open to love. And then that's how I go on this survival love journey. Because at the end of the day, you saw something in that person that was like, hmm, this is not usually what I go for. Wow. But I'm going to go there. And vice versa. So for it to work, you have to be open. You have to listen. And that's the only and only way it can work. It's not just so, oh, your love, survival, we don't work. No, because you need survival and love. You need love and survival. It's like the hard and the soft, the soft and the hard, up, down, day, night. So, yeah, wait, wait, can, I, can, I, I, can, can I ask you a question? Like, that's really I just want to elaborate survival. on what yeah. you said real quick. Is how do you but but the person that's surviving, <laughs> but the person that's surviving, they do low key want love too, right? Yeah. Am I raised them on love or survival? Love and what has been love been like for me from back then till now? It it it, it sh love to me is patient. Love love to me is patient. Love to me is 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 um being open. It's communication. It's choosing choosing that person choose no you ask me what has love been like for me those are very like standard dictionary words no i'm telling but you said my journey but you said that's what that's what it's been like. it's a choice right did you always it, feel safe growing up did i always feel safe yes yes not me yes with with, with i felt safe I, I felt safe within my it family into no with, within my family and she's right within my family when my mother and father was married it was on love. Yeah. And then for my mother, she divorced my father because she's a lesbian. And so it became a survival. She chose her. So yeah. the survival was, it was like, damn, do I stay married to my husband, but I'm not true to myself and stay married for my kids? Or do I choose me? And she chose to survive. She went against the grain because my mother's 50 plus. I don't care saying her age. And back then you couldn't come out as lesbian. You couldn't do that. 2021, yes. But back then, no. So what I'm saying is I was all about love. And then it became a thing about survival. And, 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 and could they have worked? My mother said my father and her could have worked if he was a different person. So I that's what I'm saying. Wait, wait, it goes wait. back I, to I, what I'm saying. Oliver, Oliver, Oliver. I, 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 I want to flip, flip what you just said, though, about the survival and the love tactic, right? Your mom, I think, I think what you just described is great. I think just reverse it. I think her going to choose to be with the woman was was her love. But well, she didn't leave. No, she didn't go for a woman. Okay. She chose her like a sexuality. Right, right. Let me choosing, just put that out there. herself and the sexuality, yeah. that was love. I'm on the opposite end. Because to me, I feel like, I feel like, well, love, being raised in, on love and survival is so different. And I personally was raised on survival. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was homeless, you know what I'm saying, for a, lot, a long period of time growing up. My mom was a single parent and nobody helped us. And we just had to get it how we had to get it. We lived in station wagons, you know what I'm saying? I had lived in the most rundown apartments. Or I had rats and roaches in my, in my apartments and, 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 I, and we would just had to survive. You know what I'm saying? We just had to make it to the next day and maybe things got better. And, it, and that was a course of period was like my, almost my whole entire childhood. So like I do end up dating girls who are raised on love and it's usually a problem. And, and, and the problem is because she was raised on love, so she can't understand survival. And I can't understand her love. You know what I'm saying? But the, the only thing that kind of binds us together is that when you're raised on love, you find some miraculously good in the worst of situations. Yeah. And that was a mess. Because when you're raised on survival, all you know is to survive. And with survive comes, you know, anger, hostility. You know what I'm saying? Almost, I have no emotions. People died in front of me and I don't cry. I don't shed no tears because I was raised on survival. And they can't say, they say, yo, something must be wrong with you. You know, you must be a sociopath because you don't have emotions. But I was just raised on survival, so they can't understand that. Me coming from the Caribbean country where my mother had eight kids, triplets and twins, and my father's in America, and my mother loved my father. My mother loved my father. He comes here every six months. She's having eight children in Jamaica in a one bedroom apartment with eight kids, triplets and twins. She went on love. My father went on survival to make sure he could provide for us. He taught us. Now I was able to see both sides. I was able to see, you know, my mother putting three rocks together and woods together to cook for us and let us see what it is to be really dirt fucking poor. And then I was able to see the other side when my father brought me to America to see, you know, his survival mode of coming here as an immigrant and surviving. So you can be raised on both. My mother, she showed love and loyalty 
to my father from the beginning, from she was 16 years old until she was, what, they just broke up, but they still married four years ago. So the point that I'm saying is that it can be both. They I was married. They're still married, but they're separated. But there's, it's like, what's the point? Because they're just always together. I don't they're even get up. it. But No, because my mom only knew him. She, that's, and my father's 73, my mother's 60. That's 15 years difference. She was a young girl that fell in love with a man and had all these babies for this one man her whole life. She taught me love. She taught me loyalty. And that's why I'm very loyal, because of my mother. My mother taught me also, educate yourself. She taught us survival, but she taught us love. Sometimes I feel it's a double-edged sword, because when I meet a man, I love so hard because of my mother. But then I also know survival mode from my father, where he taught us how to get your own, no matter what. Well, what it is is that she taught me to love unconditionally. She taught me that we have to live in love to understand it. Most because you got to uh, abundance of love. Most people don't, but you see sometimes you can love somebody. Some people just need love to become who they are. Yeah, but I'm saying if you're dating a guy and he's single, he meets you. He he wants to get to know you. You have too much love. He may not want you cuz you there's too much love for him. So we're married. So those type of women we wind up being the fixers. We wind up being the fixers when we find relationships. No, I think all women we are want, fixers. Most women, but women that are dealing with that type of abundance of love that they saw from their parents as a young age, we wind up being the fixers. So for me, I always feel like I could fix the man that's dealing with the damage issue, the man that's survival I'm, mode. I just learned that from Rico. And I, I, I so Rico's the type of man I would take and like, want to fix. Yeah, but you got to understand, you will scare him Thanks, off. Why? Well, maybe <laughs> she, won't, she won't, you know what it is? It will balance. There is such thing as a dead-end street. <clears throat> You're taking on challenges that are unrealistic sometimes because guess what? Some people don't need fixing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some people just they need are, they are. a companion. To love them. That's yeah, true. but but like I might be, not just me, but a person might be the same way that they are forever. They're going to grow and they're going to adapt new habits that's mm -hmm. going to make them a better person, hopefully. But they don't need somebody to come in and say, yo, you know what? You had this habit. Hmm. Let's go do this. And, and, and that's how you push people away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they just need to need you to walk alongside them. And that's the problem with women that think that they can fix. Not a, fix. When I say fix, though, Rico, I'm not saying to come in and change you. Sometimes I'm not, I'm just you saying, that like, never saw love to see the love just, that I have I, I, and, I just, and change you. You, you got to see somebody from Rico's perspective. I get his point. Somebody's a survivor. Sometimes too much of a nice gesture could scare the shit out of yes, you. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Or does it make sense? I agree. Absolutely. Really does it make sense? Absolutely. Like, I, yo, if you were, if like, if so, if a girl came, she was way too giving. In my mind, it's she, weird. I, yeah, it's weird. Like, yo, something's up. I don't know what it is. I really can't trust her. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Because she's too open in the sense of giving love yep. too freely, and it's almost to a survivor giving love freely is like insane. I'm just, I'm just using a story. Dating a guy, I, I dated a guy. Super in love. You like, were super in love? Like, no. He, I mean, when I say, when I say, like, he was totally against the relationship. Okay, I pushed, I pushed forward with with commitment. When I got it, because I'm in survival mode, I realized that's not what I really wanted. He's he's in lover mode now. And so he's putting all these expectations on me to be this person that's in love. This is what love looks like. This is how you give love. This is how you show it. And my excuse would be like, well, that's not my love language. That's not how I show love. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, and so what happened? So, so you're in a cross because I want to get right to it. Yeah. Because yep. mm -hmm. you're in a cross between what you know love is, which is being taken care of. Yes. To somebody saying, I just want to genuinely love you. Yes. And I'm you still. I'm. Choose. You will always choose being taken care of. Absolutely. Because she's in survival mode. Mm -hmm. She's a survivor. And I don't know how to turn that switch off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's not, it's not a switch no, though. You don't need somebody to turn. Like I said, you need a companion to walk that. alongside mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like not every. Some people are open to changing exactly how they are, and there's nothing wrong with that. But some people are just who they are, and it comes a point where you just gotta accept who they are and help them. Walk in the right direction. So, Not so when you have, when you have, when you, when you, just real quick, yeah, go ahead. No, just real quick, it just goes back to what I was saying earlier about like go asking you questions, like what do you need, like what can I do in this moment, just going day by day with that person because people are always constantly changing. It goes back to that statement that made. But let me ask you a question. I'm sorry. This is what I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna be real quick. T said something. Rico said something. Holiday said something. 
right? They all saying, oh, survivor, love. Cool, that is amazing. Here's another side I'm going to add to that. People find your fucking tribe, meaning sometimes it ain't going to work. Love a survivor, 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 lover, lover. You find the person that works for you because all this sounds like is y'all trying to put a triangle in a fucking circle. Some people just ain't for you. No, 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 no. Let me, I'm, I'm going to elaborate. Because what they're saying is like, yo, I'm a survivor. And Rico said you just want to find a companion that's along the, side, the same side as you, right? Sometimes. So, sometimes. So he's saying what I'm saying. He attracted someone that is on his page. You find your tribe. That's what he's saying. Why would Rico want to be with someone that's trying to not be his companion, not walk along the same side.